discussing opioids and substance abuse disorders specifically uh, if you guys don't know we have already covered previous uh, substance abuse videos as far as alcohol barbiturates and benzos so this is going to be our fourth video pretty much on substance abuse disorders and on our youtube channel you can find the playlist with all these videos and more for you assembly step one uh, psychiatry video so go check it out and while you're there don't forget to like comment and subscribe to our channel if you guys like what we are doing <sighs> all right let's get started let's talk about opioids opioids are a cns depressant okay this is going to be the last cns depressant that we're going to be talking about we talked about alcohol we talked about benzos and barbiturates already this is going to be the last one this is the most common cause of drug overdose in the united states and a very hot button topic because opioid addiction is very high right now it's very very common now these substances opioids act on opioid receptors to produce morphine like effects and uh, they act very similar to endorphins which are naturally occurring large peptides that activate these opioid receptors so in these endorphins you can have endorphins you can have encephalins and dynorphins now all of these things are going to activate the opioid receptors these are found on your central and peripheral neurons and we're going to talk about the side effects of uh, of both the central and peripheral neuron opioid receptor activation but there are three main types. You have the mu receptor, which has a high affinity for endorphins, which is pretty much what opioids act like. Then you have the delta receptor, which uh, has a high affinity for encephalins. And then you have the kappa receptor, which binds to dynorphins. Now, when it comes to them binding, they have some effects on the nerves, which include euphoria and reduced pain. And they do this by two main mechanisms. And this is pretty important. This is something you should definitely know and have a good understanding of when it comes to the mechanism of action of opioids. Opioids are going to affect the presynaptic nerve by closing the calcium channel. And when they close the calcium channel, they prevent neurotransmitters from being released into the, 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 uh, the synaptic cleft from the presynaptic nerve. Okay, that's very important. They prevent neurotransmitter release. And then on the postsynaptic nerve, they open potassium channels to hyperpolarize the actual nerve, making it harder to produce a signal transduction. Okay, that's very important. It makes it harder for a nerve to fire by opening the calcium channels. Sorry, opening the potassium channels and closing the calcium channels. I got that mixed up. So I would highly recommend that you understand this because this is pretty important. This is pretty high yield in general for how nerves function. Now, when it comes to opioids, uh, specifically opioid drugs, these are going to activate these uh, opioid receptors we're talking about. Mainly, they're going to activate the mu receptor, and we'll discuss that more. But often, these drugs become a source of abuse be uh, due to their side effect and their uh, nerve effect uh, that they have on the body. Now, you have both prescription and illicit drugs, and you should know both of these for step one and medicine in general. The prescription opioids are morphine, hydromorphone, fentanyl, um, meperidine, and codeine. Very, very common drugs, which have very similar uh, clinical uses, right? And a lot of them are used for pain control. They can also be used for acute pulmonary edema, and in that case, that's going to be IV morphine. Uh, they can also be used for a cough suppressant, uh, aka codeine, codeine in my cup. Uh, it's, a, it's very commonly used in rap lyrics, right? So this is commonly over uh, overdosed on and abused uh, by many, many people. So codeine is a, is a opioid you should know about. So these are your main prescription drugs right here, okay? That's stuff that people get prescribed that they overdose. Oh, oh sorry, that they abuse. Now, when it comes to illicit drugs, the main drug you need to know is heroin. Heroin is also known as diamorphine, and this is injected via needles. And because you are injecting this drug via needles, uh, you are at a higher risk of developing infections. A lot of people who abuse heroin don't really keep their needles clean for the most part. And uh, overall, when it comes to step one, IV drug users are at a higher risk of developing def uh, different infections. So when it comes to bacterial infections, they're going to develop bacteremia due to staph aureus, okay, and that's the tricuspid endocarditis. They can have viral infections with hepatitis B and C and HIV as well. Now, all of these are very 
addictive drugs. And it's very easy to develop tolerance. And when you develop tolerance, you're going to need to increase your dosage, right? So the dose ends up increasing. But one thing to understand is that the peripheral nervous system effects uh, usually do not develop tolerance. So when someone is constipated or has meiosis, which is pain, you know, a very small narrowing of the pupil, uh, that is not something that a patient becomes tolerant to. It's going to be more so the CNS effects of euphoria and you know less pain that a patient ends up having a uh, developing tolerance too. So let's talk about the nervous effects of opioids. Opioids have CNS and PNS effects because you have opioid receptors on your central and peripheral nervous systems. So because of the fact that you have these receptors, opioids are going to bind to them and they're going to preferentially bind to the mu receptor leading to euphoria and analgesia. Okay, analgesia, that's the main reason why they have such a high abuse potential, right? Think about it. Everyone wants to feel good, uh, and uh, these drugs do exactly that. They make you feel good. This is also a CNS depressant, so you will have sedation, and this sedation can eventually uh, and dangerously lead to respiratory depression. Now, in the CNS depressant category, there are two other things that can lead to respiratory depression. The first one is alcohol okay we discussed that in the alcohol abuse video and the second one is barbiturates okay so barbs now what does not lead to respiratory depression or very rarely leads to respiratory depression benzodiazepines that's very important to understand the differentiating factors another thing that will happen uh, is meiosis also known as pupillary constriction aka pinpoint pupil pupils like you can see here you see this pupil is very small compared to the iris as overall so pinpoint pupils occur because of the cns effect and this is one of the things Right, one of the things that does not uh, develop tolerance when it comes to continuous use of opioids. Now, when it comes to the peripheral nervous system, patients will complain of being constipated. Again, a uh, a side effect that is not uh, something you develop tolerance to, as well as skin warmth and flushing. So, with acute intoxication of opioids. We already know that uh, this is going to be the most common drug overdose in the United States. We already know the CNS effects of euphoria, respiratory depression, and meiosis, aka pupillary constriction and pinpoint pupils. This is all very high yield. You should definitely know because you need to be able to differentiate someone who's intoxicated from opioids uh, compared to someone who's withdrawing from opioids. And you also already know the PNS effects of constipation, right? And when you listen to someone, you may hear decreased bowel sounds. All of these uh, side effects, all these effects is your clinical presentation, okay? In your clinical presentation, you're going to see this uh, constantly. So how are you going to treat someone who has acute opioid intoxication? You're going to give them a drug called naloxone. This is a short-acting opioid antagonist, okay? Short-acting opioid antagonist. And this is going to, uh, this may also cause something called opioid withdrawal. But for treatment of intoxication, you give them naloxone. So what happens if naloxone causes opioid withdrawals, right? Let's talk about opioid withdrawals now, because that's also very important. This is going to occur to someone who is dependent on opioids, and it usually starts 6 to 12 hours after their last use of opioids, similar to alcohol withdrawal, etc., etc. Now, one easy way to remember opioid withdrawal, and it's so simple, guys, you don't have to complicate it, is that it reverses, it reverses everything that's happening in the CNS and PNS, okay? So in the CNS, their, their patients are going to feel restless, they're going to feel yawning and, you know, pilo erection, which is their hair standing up. They're going to feel nauseous, vomiting. They're going to have diarrhea. Uh, keep in mind, uh, in opioid intoxication, they're going to feel constipated. In withdrawal, they're going to have diarrhea and abdominal cramps. They may have rhinorrhea, lacrimation, and flu-like symptoms. And the main giveaway for withdrawal from someone who is suffering with uh, opioid withdrawal is going to be mydriasis, a.k.a. pupillary relaxation right in the pew in the previous video on the previous sorry slide the the pupil was very small in this case it's really big it's dilated so dilated pupils or pupillary relaxation is a clear giveaway
away for opioid withdrawal. And these patients are also going to be very agitated. They're not going to be, you know, kind of suppressed. They're not going to be, it's not seen as depressant anymore, right? They're withdrawing from it. So they're going to be very agitated, very aggressive sometimes, or uh, very annoyed in general. And so those are going to be your main opioid withdrawal symptoms. Now, when it comes to withdrawal treatment, there are several drugs you need to know. We've already talked about a few, one of these, uh, one drug in general, and that's for acute intoxication. That was naloxone. When it comes to withdrawal treatment, the first drug we're going to talk about is buprenorphine. Buprenorphine is a long-acting partial agonist, okay? Uh, in the previous episode, in the previous slides, we talked about naloxone, which was a short-acting opioid antagonist. This is a long-acting partial agonist. Now, this drug is not regulated like methadone. We're going to talk about methadone in a second, but uh, it's usually combined with naloxone, and this is going to prevent abuse with buprenorphine. Remember, buprenorphine is an agonist. Naloxone is a short-acting antagonist antagonist okay that is naloxone so naloxone will prevent buprenorphine uh, abuse that's often given together the second drug you can give is methadone this is a long-acting agonist similar to buprenorphine but it's often used for heroin specifically so I like to write in methadone heroin now if you guys don't know there's a lot of methadone clinics out there that are, are used to help people get off of heroin this is a very regulated drug very very regulated because it is a long-acting agonist so there's a lot of abuse potential and there the main thing that methadone does is that it reduces cravings that patients might have for opioids it's used for substance abuse maintenance once they have gotten over the addiction itself. And then finally, we have naltrexone, right? Don't get naloxone and naltrexone mixed up because they sound so similar, they're not the same. This is a long-acting antagonist, right? Similar to naloxone, but naloxone was a short-acting antagonist. Naltrexone is a long-acting antagonist. Uh, it blocks the effects of opioids similar to naloxone, okay? It's administered to help patients uh, who have relapsed. That's the main thing. And it's also used in alcohol abuse. Now, with that being said, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is everything you really need to know for opioids when it comes to the USMLE Step 1. Now, if you guys don't know, uh, you can also find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search 